Jason, we're happy to have you today. Thank you for having me. I'm, I'm so excited to be here and uh, to kick off this new initiative from y'all. I'm truly blessed. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, welcome. So uh, Jason, we'll, uh, we'll just get right into it and uh, we'll just start picking your brain on your creative process. So uh, what has been inspiring you creatively these days? And what have you been playing, watching, reading, or listening to lately? Uh, I've been playing a lot of Super Mario Odyssey and a lot of a lot of Nintendo Switch this year. Super Mario Odyssey is my current fave right now, but I threw in a lot of hours in Animal Crossing, um, and I've been playing a lot of a lot of older Super Mario titles. Super Mario is 35 years years old, uh, 35 years young this year. So I've been playing a lot of his older games on the Nintendo Switch, like Super Mario Brothers 3, Mario World, and I'm really looking forward to the upcoming uh, Super Mario 64 re-release, one of my favorite games of all time. So a lot of Mario and a lot of old game dev videos. So when do you feel the most creative and how do you handle creative blocks? When I feel that big burst of my aha moments with creativity, it usually comes through after like days or long hours, even weeks of maybe tormenting myself over like a specific idea that I may have about something I want to approach and I get my ah moments at the most random times but uh usually I've been trying to channel a lot of that creativity lately because it's really it's too easy for myself like me to to plug into like maybe I can't do something or I don't know how to do something I've been trying to step back a little bit uh approach things with a clear mind to to figure out how to do things creatively because um uh like like listening to um i've <laughs> been listening to a lot of uh a lot of old school rap a lot of new york old school rap so i've been listening to a lot of music um and uh, i've been taking um some walks around like take a like walk around my uh, complex and um allow myself time almost like pacing but rather than pacing around the house i'll take a walk maybe around the block Mm. or um, while listening to music, uh, removing myself from my environment to allow myself to think about something uh, away from my usual space. And usually that provides me that the aha moment or context that it may have to like weeks of honestly, just sort of struggling with how to approach something creative. I feel like a lot of the creative, that, that the output that happens is a lot of, maybe in, it happens in here, you know, and then finally I have that aha moment and it comes out. So I usually allow myself some music time and like, rather than pacing around my, my home, stepping outside for a little bit and maybe just taking a walk around the block, even if it's just like back and forth on one side, just giving myself uh, some distance from my uh, normal everyday environment. So we had a bonus question that wasn't included in the questions we sent you. And we wanted to know what was the last song that you listened to? Oh my goodness. Okay, so <laughs> the, the last song was actually uh, a Whitney Houston song that randomly played because uh, I was just searching through old 90s like rap and R&B and I was just I was just I just typed in 90s R&B 90s uh, rap uh, and just like different genres of music and uh, uh, a Whitney Houston song popped up and I listened to it. I, 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 it's from the movie The Bodyguard, and then now YouTube is like slowly like slipping in like Whitney Houston, which is fine. I'm totally down for it. <laughs> but it was a Whitney Houston song. I don't remember the name of the title, but I'm pretty sure it was from the movie The, the Soundtrack, uh, The Bodyguard, that she like started and created the whole soundtrack for way back yeah. when it was a huge hit. Yeah, old movie. <laughs> it's, it's funny wow. how YouTube just like and unexpected buries you deeper down. into the hole you're in. Yeah, it, it it either knows what I was listening to with, with my mom when I was a kid, which totally was Whitney Houston, um, yeah. or you know, it just wanted to scratch an itch I didn't know I had. So I'm down. I'm always down for it. Did you sing along? I know all the lyrics actually. That's the that's, okay. no no like to some of the songs. Like that, I don't. That's why I want to look up the titles because like mm. the the actual lyrics are played in my head because I'm serious. Like I, I grew up in Queens. And uh, I, my mom and I and my family would visit my aunt in Staten Island. And it's a 90 minute drive from Queens to Staten Island, New York. And throughout the whole entire, I remember one summer, it was just the Bodyguard soundtrack playing over and over and over again. Oh, wow. So, <laughs> so when you say that, you joke, but my brain auto completed a lot. Like most of those lyrics, I was just blown away by how much I remembered, but also more importantly, like how I was vibing to the music. So, right on. Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> That was a great yeah. story. <laughs> yeah. Earlier, earlier you mentioned like you're watching some like game dev footage, and uh, mm -hmm. like I saw some game dev footage like when I was watching this documentary about the worst game ever made, the the ET game. 
Yeah. And they were showing like Atari in the golden days and it just looked like such a cool time to be making video games with like a group of people. And uh, yeah, now I want to ask you about some game dev questions. So can you tell us uh, a little bit about what you do within the game development world? My, my role essentially within game development is providing a platform for, uh, for people that don't have a voice to have a voice, putting a spotlight on them, making sure the industry is paying attention to what's going on. And then having that dialogue amongst everybody and then moving forward from there. That's, that's awesome, man. So you're like basically a producer. You're like yes. P. Diddy, P. Diddy. Of <laughs> I'm an enabler of opportunities. Yeah. You know, that's and, like, people need that. Yeah. You're creating those opportunities. I'm trying um, my you, best and I'm not alone, but I'm trying my best. Yeah. No, I think when you do stuff like that, you inspire other people to, you know, to step up to the plate. Um, so do you have like a favorite, thing about your job about like your what you do in the game dev community yeah i think it's looking at all the upcoming uh talent and seeing a lot of the great games that are being developed you know like uh for me like going on twitter and maybe hopping on a hashtag uh for maybe like a game jam or some sort of creative virtual creative environment that people plug into um you know there's so many community efforts from around the world you get to see like people creating games within Uruguay. And I'm like, whoa, that's really cool. Like, you know, you get to see how um, game development's handled. I, I get to see like how it's handled in Brazil. So like, I feel like I get a first look at, at where it's going just by naturally paying attention. And then, you know, my favorite part is seeing those people that are doing the hard work and seeing a lot of the great games that are being made and then and, and taking that and, and then seeing that as like an opportunity to present it to the world. Like that to me is, like that, that's just the best because, you know, I, I could be, I could be paying attention to it all day, but if the industry and the, the community and, and everyone that loves games at large doesn't know that Latinx people are making video games and we're making great games. Like, you know, for me, it's like, what's the point? So I, I just love seeing all the cool stuff coming up. Like there's some great stuff being developed globally that like, you'll be able to see a lot of that, a lot in X games festival, but I, I'm telling him like, there's some good stuff coming, really unique stuff. Yeah, that's awesome. I'm excited to see it. Um, you kind of talked about like how you got started in game dev, but was there a particular moment or experience that made you realize that you wanted to pursue game development? Kind of like an origin? Yeah, so I think a lot of it was born out of playing video games when I was really young, and then I would finish them. And like in the 80s and 90s, the credits, you would see like game designer, and it would be, uh, a lot of the games are made in Japan, but they never really credited the, the creators so it wouldn't be their names it would be like what would look like gamer tags right now there were just a bunch of nicknames uh and i was always like who's making these games <laughs> like who's making these games so um uh i'm a little older so like i grew up reading magazines video game magazines i didn't i didn't go on the internet to like on youtube like it is so amazing on my phone i had to like read video game news and then interviews with game developers that was like months old but i used to live on that so like that sort of planted the curiosity, the seed of, you know, game development, like, how do you do this? Um, but, but really a lot of it, I, I think was born from the PlayStation, Nintendo 64, Sega Saturn era, where they made the jump from 2D to 3D. And there was more, the, the internet started booming. So there were more conversations around how these games were being made. And it was that time period that took the curiosity I have had as a youth sort of like slowly getting a, the, a peek behind the fourth wall of game development to outright having like, even though it took like a long time to download, like a one minute trailer of a, of a video game that I really want to play or an interview from a game developer of a game that's coming out like next week, you know, we're talking late 90s. So to have like that information with this big tech, not like technology shift in games, while also going through like a globally transformative experience with the internet during that time was like, okay, not only am I armed with the knowledge, I'm totally curious, how do I do this? So from, from then on, it was just always like slow steps with like my career or whatever I was doing at the time. I feel like it was always slowly building every year, like a season in a series building toward like that end goal. And that end goal is what I'm doing right now, which is Latinx Games Festival. To me, this is always like essentially what I wanted to do. But a lot of that was born out of the curiosity of, of flipping through magazines and the, the internet and the big tech shift that happened in the late 90s. And I just couldn't undo it. What were some of the games that inspired you early on? I grew up on Atari, which was a hand-me-down from my parents. So I played uh, Pac-Man, the 2600 edition, 
probably buried along ET for Atari 2600 out in the desert, I'm sure, because it caused, it helped cause the big crash of the 80s, almost killed the video game business, and it took a while to recover. Thankfully, Nintendo came in <laughs> and essentially saved it with their arcade games and then uh, Super Mario Brothers, and that ended up being a big hit. So that's what essentially like influenced me was old Atari and then seeing that jump from Atari games to Nintendo was like almost a similar scene like the 2D to the 3D jump. I just started seeing more colors. I started hearing more like like more sounds. There was just more 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 creativity, more story. It was just a lot of more, but also like the games themselves were found, they were just great. These are the, the timeless classics that people still play today with Super Mario Brothers, uh, Legend of Zelda, Donkey Kong, Metroid. Uh, these are franchises that, that are strong and live on to this day. So really it was like, Early Atari got me going, but, but I think Nintendo is what really made it like, like truly inspired like my love of video games. So how has working in the game industry affected how you play and think about games? Oof. Well, I think for a period of time, I was so invested in like getting started uh, to break in into video games. I stopped playing them for a bit. And then there was this like sort of almost unspoken of joke where I would go to an industry event you know maybe it's at an after party or some networking situation where you're talking to people and then uh, you know I was I was new in the game I was green you know I was trying to break in and I had all these questions but one of my icebreakers was hey what game are you playing and then either it was followed with laughter or like a chuckle like I don't play games the only game I play is whatever I'm working on or whatever I'm tasked to or whatever is part of my you know my publish like whatever it was there was a whole lot of like eh, cynicism or like I'm not really playing anything and like I, I kind of had that a little for a little bit um but so like i think break in it didn't change my it changed my love of video games but it didn't change that i loved video games i saw like a lot of people maybe like were, couldn't look at games objectively anymore and had like a chip on their shoulder about it because like game development is a grind so one of the things i always try to do is just remind myself that like i love video games and to play them <laughs> so uh if anything it just changed the way like i think about the business end because like if I look at a really great explosion or I hear like a celebrity speaking, I'm thinking like, well, how much did that cost? Uh, is there a conversation of like, you know, like, like what got cut to, 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 to get to this part of the story or like, wow, how did they get there? What was the storyboard look like? I start thinking of like, how, how did they put it together? Uh, but what, one of the things I always try to remind myself is that since I love video games is to just get lost in them and uh, don't, don't, don't constantly remind yourself of all the game development tricks that are used to present this fall in love with what you're experiencing just allow the experience to wash over you so like like i said change the business part of it totally and i can never undo that but i always i not remind myself i just dive into video games and remind myself that they're just really cool and to play them and enjoy them uh to never forget it so it almost almost changed it almost took my that part out but like nah especially not in 2020 the switch is the hero of 2020 with all of us you know with lockdown i was like the MVP <laughs> this year. Yeah. Yeah, how did Lad Next Game start? Like you mentioned, you know, why you got, why you started it, but how did it start? I guess, what is that story? So with Latinx Games Festival, and, I, and here's the thing with that, like with Latinx Games Festival, I wanted to buy a ticket and attend the festival. Like I would talk with people over the years of like, would it be cool if there was just like, like, you know, you have like your E3s and your game developers conferences and your Indicates, like especially out here in LA, you have like all these really cool gatherings of, of, of creatives that kind of like specifically focus on that time of the year. Like this is what we're spotlighting. And I always thought like, wouldn't it be great if, if there was a way for us to get together and I want to buy a ticket for that. So it ended up turning into like loose conversations with people into like, hey, like I'm going to do this. <laughs> Uh, I don't know when, but I, you know, I, I'm going to do it. And as I was co-organizing Game Devs of Color, I started to learn like essentially like, how to do this on your own without a major support system. You know, like, how do you do this? How do you find funding? How do you get the support? How do you source out of venue? How do you do like all the work to have that one or two days where you have that gathering of people and, um, you know, essentially just started out of the, out of realizing like it wasn't going to happen unless someone, someone started doing the work, you know? So I, I started doing the work, um, but I was also just busy with, you know, my, my existing business and, you know, like all the passion projects, you know, I was just overwhelmed and busy. So it was always like something in the back of my mind. I was secretly hoping like someone else is going to do this and I'll be able to just throw my support in that way. Right. Um, but um, 
my wife and I, we, we were looking for a place uh, outside of New York City. Um, so what we were doing for a couple months of 2018 was we were essentially Airbnb in different cities. And we knew we would end up in, in Los Angeles. Uh, so we're Airbnb in different places there. We ended up in Long Beach. Uh, first day in Long Beach. And I, I was, we were looking around and I went off by myself sort of like on an adventure to see what was in Long Beach. Cause I grew up with it in like music and music videos and Long Beach sort of had a different, had, I had like a different image, different perspective, perception. But I was like, yay, Long Beach. So I was like, let me just yeah. explore. And I, I was walking around and I bumped into the museum of Latin American art. I bumped into MOLA and yeah. I had MOLA on my dream list, but probably unattainable, like, venues for a latinx games festival in my mind i was like that's a dream venue i don't live there i don't even know how to start that conversation but boy it would be great and i put it away and i started planning for something very smaller and very different a little more direct and then when i saw that as we're in the middle of finding a new place i was just like time out time out done done we found our place i found my venue and and that was it and it, it just felt so right and it mm. felt like just it, it was it was just perfect even if it was just a complete accident it was perfect because it was what i wanted i didn't think i can get it and i was just going about my own business still sort of planning for this in the end i ended up bumping into the, the venue that ended up hosting this event so you know it, it started out of like necessity and then maybe a want and then it happened out of just like beautiful circumstance and then everything just fell together with uh, the sponsors like nintendo and xbox and amazon games and unity and niantic and everybody coming through you know to like make this event happen it was it was just a really beautiful thing but when i when i saw it and i i i started turning you know like turning the moving the gears on it it was like full speed ahead and you know it was just like blinding speed from that point on but yeah, just a, a lot of a lot of back end work for a little bit and, and a beautiful circumstance. Why is that so important to you? Because every year I do this, I, I always discover something new about how communities exist and how we it coexist in a space. And one of the things I wanted to do when I when I came out here was to find a place where I felt I can exist and like plug into. I wanted to kind of easily just plug into something and not have to, you know like do all this work but um it kind of almost goes back to never feeling like i had a spot to fit in anyway so you know a lot of it was really just driven by wanting to make sure that i was able to have a community and then find all see all these different community members sort of doing stuff and getting them together you know like i don't want to i i'm 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 slowing because i don't want to say selfishly because in my mind it's just i just really wanted to see this right like yeah. I really wanted and needed this to happen. And so some of that is driven by like what I see is the obvious, which is a lot of people doing great work, get them together, boom, yeah, three things happen. And also my need and want for like, where's where's my crew? Where's my, you know, where's my circle? Who do I vibe with? Who do I connect with yeah. out here? So maybe it's a little long-winded, a little like branching out from the original question, but it, like I said, it's really just driven by like my my wants and the obvious needs of the community. And those two things meet usually when I'm very driven and the community is very driven to do hard work. So. Uh, thanks. So um, I guess this is kind of a, a opportunity for you to share what you have coming up on the radar for yourself. I guess you have a game jam of some sort coming up. Is that is that so true? We have, so we have uh, in, in partnership with uh, Latinx in Gaming, which is a charity organization that's focused on also uplifting and highlighting Latinx voices. Uh, yeah. They'll be hosting a game jam that we're partnered up on. Uh, so we'll be uh, using our platform to showcase a lot of the great work that the community is uh, doing and, and, and looking for like hidden gems that don't exist yet to spotlight for our upcoming festival, which is Latinx Games Festival should be the second year virtually online, of course. That will be on November 21st to the 22nd. Three days before that, we're gonna have a career fair, which uh, right now our sponsor is, right now we have signed uh, Valve. Um, you may know them from Half-Life and Steam, you know, small indie company. <laughs> yeah. And then we have Niantic and we have uh, we have Playdate, which is a really cool, it's from uh, Panic, they published. Uh, the Untitled Goose game. It's a really, it's called Play Day. It's a really cool portable. It has like a hand crank and it's some really interesting like like game development ideas that people can play with. So like 
um, you know, I'd love to see what, what happens with that. But we have a lot of support heading into our career fair, which is on the 18th, the 19th, and the 20th. We have more partners to announce soon. And for Hispanic Heritage Month, for the whole month, we'll be supporting the Unidos Game Jam, um, which is um, happening throughout the whole month of Hispanic uh, Heritage Month. So um, we're looking forward to seeing what the community creates and we're really looking forward to enabling people opportunities to um, get hired, get funding, or at the very least get noticed. We'll be having portfolio reviews during our career fair. So from November 18th to November 22nd is Latinx Games Festival, but the content presentation, the panels, the workshops, round tables, uh, speaker spotlights, games, all that, uh, the Latinx Game Awards that we'll be having, that, that'll be on the 21st and the 22nd. So what are some of the challenges you faced in shifting your focus to like online platforms? Oof, figuring out how to actually do it, to be, you know, to be just keep it, like the tools are super accessible. So you have accessible, so you have Twitch and like really, you know, like I can use my phone as a media like manager and I could that that in itself is the producer and everything to have a great live professional broadcast you know like it doesn't take much but like I'm not a streamer my a lot of folks on my team we, you know they don't stream so we're really good at like in real life conferences so the biggest shift was like how do you how do you do this we knew how to do it but it was like how do you present it what do you do in the meantime because we felt like we had to do a little bit more than just the festival, um, also just to test our bandwidth for a live stream presentation. Um, so we did some smaller events um, to get our feet wet and understand just what this looks like and allowed ourselves room to grow and some and, and to take a lot of learnings from those smaller events so we can take that and pour it and pour our all into the festival coming up in November. But really it was just the biggest shift was like, okay, how do how do we how do we do it now? We have we know what we want for content. We know what our presentation will look like. We can be really creative and keep the festival special while also experimenting with smaller events. So just 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 going virtual was the biggest like how. And then once we figured that out, we knew exactly like what the festival in November will look like. And we had a very clear vision of like, okay, now that we had that experience, we know what we want to do. So it took us a little bit to sort of figure it out, but like when we had our aha moments, kind of like how I'd step out and pace around for a little bit. When, when we as a team had our aha moment of our experiences with doing this virtually, like what November will look like at all, everything just started falling into place. So long story short, actually going virtual. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's awesome because I think even when things open back up again, you could still do like virtual sessions to, to oh, yeah. you know open the doors to people who don't live in Long Beach. It forced us to do things we should have been doing anyway, which was thinking beyond Long Beach. But since we had to organize it in a real life festival, you know, you're really focused on getting that right. But now, you know, due to the pandemic, it, it forced us to think differently and creatively. And we can't undo those learnings. And those learnings are being poured into like our presentation this November, but also how we move forward and, and reach out to more people throughout the year. So it ended up being a, a really good thing, a cool thing in the end. Nice. Awesome. So we're going to shift gears a little bit and ask you some Long Beach questions. Uh, what are your favorite places in Long Beach? Uh, also, what Mola. are your favorite places to eat? <laughs> I, I like going to Mola. Sometimes there's like food trucks <clears throat> outside there, so that's always cool too. Um, uh, I've been on Seabirds. I've been ordering their fries and their watermelon kefir soda. Uh, so like I'll go over there and, and, and get their fries. So like uh, or their um, ava tacos, their their beef battered ava tacos, or their kimchi taco. Uh, so like I've been I've been on seabirds, and then um, yeah, there's there's a variety of ice cream and pizza places around here that are that are that are fun. I haven't really like eating out as much lately, but um, when I do, it's usually seabirds. Nice. I haven't got to try seabirds yet, but I'll check it out. It's fun. <laughs> So what would you like to see happen in our city in regards to a game development community? So you already started the Land X games, but do you have any ideas like what's going to happen after that if you continue to expand? I mean, I guess at this, where we're at now would be like getting back into MOLA when people can safely get together, right? So I would say that would be the first step. And then once we get there, thinking about how to grow it and what game development looks like here, I think with 
like the you know with the Long Beach Public Library doing their thing, and then with the Mola being invested in in in, in the arts of um, you know like not just Latinx game development, but like Latinx creativity, and then Latinx Games Festival focusing specifically on Latinx game development. I feel like Long Beach already now has a lot of these strong elements coexisting, working together, communicating, whatever it is in different ways, the, 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 the gears are moving on all ends and they're really strong. So I think what's gonna happen over the years is as naturally uh, the youth of Long Beach, and I feel like Long Beach is a super creative community focused town anyway, as, as we keep doing our thing and then stuff starts to open more where the people of Long Beach can like attend you know, like uh, our festival or attend something that's happening at the library or attend something that's happening at MOLA. Um, the, a, lot of, a lot of our effort and energy and a lot of that gathering is going to build into like a really booming, creative, I wouldn't say game development focused town, but like gaming's going to look different in like 10 years, right? So like I see, so I see a middleware tool like a Unity less as a game development platform and more of like a, a open canvas for creativity, right? It doesn't have to be video games. Maybe you use it for an art installation. Maybe you use it for a presentation for school. Maybe you have a hobby or a vision and you start using these tools to tinker with as digital Legos, whatever it is. I start to, I'm seeing, I'm thinking that the work that we're doing as long as we keep doing it and we can start getting the folks of Long Beach connected, whether that's virtually or in real life, the more that happens, the more people start thinking different creatively. And then on the game development and that on the game development and that different way of doing things creatively will allow them to utilize game development. Like I was saying before, as like a canvas, like a tool for creative expression. Uh, mm -hmm. And I think when that happens, we could really see not just unique games, but unique thing just unique creative uh forms of expression being done within long beach utilizing game development tools so like that to me is like secretly and subtly like my biggest like hope is like we keep doing our thing we'll just enable young creatives to do things differently because eventually these game development tools just like they're being used now they're being used for movies tv shows in light of uh different standards for filming these shows and movies and, and with, with covid and everything uh, a lot of 3D effects are going to have to be used. A lot of middleware tools got to be used to, to, to fill in the gaps of this. So like, I just think it's going to enable a lot of people to be creative and then eventually allow them to either just be creative and tap into that as a creative outlet or flip that for a career in whatever specific discipline they happen to utilize as a hobby. So long story short, if we keep doing our thing for Long Beach, Long Beach will keep tapping in. And over a period of time, we're just going to have a bunch of really cool creatives doing very different things that you and I and everyone here we can't even think of right now. And I'm really looking forward to that. We're almost at the home stretch. We just got a few more questions for you. So do you have any favorite games created by Latinx developers that you want to shout out? Whew, I have a few, um, but I'll, I'll take this. All right, I'll take this. I can name a whole bunch. I'll take this opportunity to spotlight uh, a game that I really love. It's a virtual game. It's available on, I know it's definitely available on PlayStation. PlayStation. Uh, VR. I know it should be available on Steam. It's called um, Pixel Ripped. There's two versions, but there's a version of it out right now called Pixel Ripped 1995. And what that is, it's, it's developed in uh, Brazil. And what that is, is it's a, it, you play as a young person in the 90s who loves video games. And since it's VR, you're, you're the kid like in your bedroom with your, you know, whatever the in-game version is of the Super Nintendo or Sega Genesis that you're, and virtually you're playing a 2D game in the 3D environment. So you're looking around and you're seeing like your bedroom and the posters you have in the wall and your bed and where you're at, but you're actually playing another video game. And then that video game that you're playing breaks out into your actual 3D environment. So if you're playing like a really cool 2D game, that's an actual 2D game, like on a Game Boy or on a fake Game Boy or on your television, whatever it is, when it bleeds out to the real world, you have all this amazing 2D action happening in your virtual augmented re reality that you still have to like look around and play. It is a fantastic example of what you can do with the virtual environment while still utilizing like core gameplay mechanics, like like, you know, sound 2d gameplay i mean i'm old so i love 2d games so to me it's like you can't lose right but like that is an amazing game so pixel rip 1995 uh, it's a sequel to pixel rip 
1984, which is the 80s version of that. This is the 90s version. So there's a lot of in-game jokes and references. And uh, when I spoke to the game developer, her her experience and her inspiration in making this game was actually like having a dream of like playing a Game Boy in class and then having the Game Boy game break out into the middle of the class. So not only does she have to like pay attention to school and not get in trouble by the teacher because she gets caught playing the Game Boy, she gets in trouble, but she has to solve the level and the boss level, which is now broken up into a reality. And that's an actual level in the first one. That's how you start out. So it's a really cool game. Look up the trailer, Pixel Rip 1995 and Pixel Rip 1984. Fantastic game. I don't think it gets enough credit or attention. So I'm just going to take this opportunity to spotlight that and say, like, if you have a PlayStation or a PlayStation VR, or you got a PC that can run it, go get it. Because uh, it's a great experience. At the very least, check out a Let's Play of it. Really cool idea for VR and just like a great video game. Flat out. Latinx yes. or not, great video game. Sounds like an amazing concept. Um, what advice would you give to someone who wants to start making video games and how would you recommend they get started? I don't want to sound dismissive or sort of, but like make them <laughs> like start, join a game jam, uh, find a discord with the community. If you're in Long Beach, you're lucky to have a lot of these cool institutions doing stuff with game development, tap into what they're doing. But the most important thing would be to, to, to get started, right? Like, I mean, so many, a lot of people, and I speak to a lot of people that like are, they love the idea of game dev, but then there's a lot of work that goes into it. You're utilizing uh, Bitsy for your program coming up, right? So like Bit Bitsy is a great way to start. Um, if you're brave, there's Unity, not brave, but like there's an asset store within Unity and Epic that, you know, you can buy pre-made stuff. Just get started, tinker with something. Look, look up uh, on YouTube, like how to make a game, use uh, an easy to start middleware tool. To, to get started but you know get get started with moving something left and right get started with the creating part just just get started and then you know since there's a lot of efforts going on join a community uh join a game jam create something but just get started and uh it will be frustrating it'll be hard but the end result is always rewarding um and, and that's where the fun is right like uh and if you can get through making something move and making something work and you can make a game or you can make an experience or you can express yourself now in a different way. So just get started. Hmm. Just get started. Can you share a story about a memorable library experience? Oh my goodness. Okay, so the, the first one that comes to mind was I was, gosh, I think I was six or seven and I had a book report that I had to do. And this is like, in the late eighties, early nineties, you know, there's no, there's no Google, there's no cell phone that I can scream into, like, give me the answers to everything, like, none of that. Yeah. So I'm tasked with doing a book report on Jackie Robinson. And I'm like, cool, how do I do this? So we were told go to the library. And like, I, I actually never been before. I knew what it was, I knew it existed. We had one in our school, but I never went to like, like the, the town, the public library, like the town one, right? And I remember going in there um, and, and speaking to the librarian and and, and um, looking at all the books. And I was so small and the library felt so big. Mm -hmm. And I grew up with uh, an encyclopedia, like the A to Z encyclopedia. So I would always like flip through like R, what's an R, what's in Z? So like, to me, I was just like, I, I knew there was knowledge in books. So when I saw like, essentially like a house of knowledge, I was... At first, I was overwhelmed, but it was more like, wow. Like, to me, at that point, I might as well have been walking into, like, a toy store because I I, I, I did love reading. I, I wish I could read more now. I mainly read, like, game dev books or, like, you know, online articles. But when I when I saw all those books, I was really excited. So when I, I found out there was just, like, like a, there was a couple of books on Jackie Robinson, and I was just diving into it. I was like, this is incredible because I just thought it was really hard. And when I tapped into, like, that wealth of knowledge, and I realized, like, okay, anything at my fingertips, I can find out. It's right here. It felt it felt at home, and um, and then and then my like so so doing my first book report on Jackie Robinson and getting all that like get, getting all the information from the from the library was was and being helped out and just feeling like like it was a great environment to learn and, and also just I remember like being quiet and not really hearing that type of quiet before and feeling like a, a vibe and energy of people like really focus on what they were doing and sort of like not knowing what that was, but being able to plug into that energy too and like focus and be excited about it. Um, that's definitely like, 
like a really cool early memory of going to the library and then getting the library card. And I say library because I'm from New York. So to me, it's a fruit. Um, mm -hmm. People give me heck for it, like, you know, crap for it all the time. But like when I, when I got that card, I was like, this is like essentially like the key to unlock all knowledge. Um, then, you know, with the internet and then like seeing like what y'all are doing and, and how, how the library could be like a source for not just not just books, but like like a place to get knowledge and a place to be acknowledged and a place to form community and to really learn and plug into like what your town's doing and to nurt like to be nurtured um, while being also I think a valuable resource, especially now and like I think the the there, there's a thirst and quest for knowledge that goes beyond what do I find on the internet and I, I actually think a lot of people have discovered rediscovered like not just like books, but like, like the library is a source for um, community development. And uh, I'm really excited about like that potential because I never really had that before, but I just had like that, that ex I don't know if people get that with books now, but like walking in there and just seeing all that, you know, it was, it's really overwhelming as a kid, but then like when you pass, you get a good grade and you learn something, it's like, whoa, like you understand the, like the power of it. And then for me, seeing what y'all are doing with game development, it's like, oh, like, to me, that's like that. That's the perfect experience for a kid. So I cannot wait to see over a period of time what kind of influence y'all have with what you're doing. And it's drifting from the question of how I felt, but like, like I said, thinking about what I would want as a kid, what y'all are doing is what I would want, like as a kid. So like, I can't wait to see like what kind of long-term effect that has on this community and everything. But long story short, all those books, all that knowledge, and I passed. And Jackie Robinson's cool. So you know. One nice. of my earliest and actually favorite memories as a as a young person. So, where can people find out more about your work and your upcoming projects? You want to. You can you can follow me on social media on Twitter, Instagram. Um, I'm on Vegapedia, V E G A P E D I A, Vegapedia on the internet on all the socials, and you can find out more about Latinx Games Festival at Latinx Games festival.com we have links to and, and videos to like our previous uh work and panels and shows all the information about the speakers and games that were featured our sponsors who we're partnered up with and what we're doing with them and then of course all of our activities and everything for our upcoming festival on november 21st and the 22nd with our career fair being on the 18th 19th and the 20th all that information and more at latinxgamesfestival.com um pop in and support it and if you're if you're watching us from long beach you know it, it's 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 for, it's online from long beach with love so i hope you all come through and, and support it and if you have any young people that are really interested in game development and want to know like how to get started or what to do or to, to hear from people that are doing great work at latinxgamesfestival.com we're going to have all that and more so hop in there and get everything you need and uh you know i hope you all hope you all come and tune in should be cool should be cool like i said i'm biased but should be cool. Latinxgamesfest.com. Festival.com. Jason, thank you so much for joining us today on Web Chat Wednesday. Uh, Chris, you want to you wanna take us out? Take us home? Thank you again. Thank you to the viewers watching this. And see you next time for Web Chat Wednesdays. Thank you all so much. Appreciate Bye. it.